Well, this weather so far this summer has been a bit mixed. One minute it's sunny and I'm getting out the strawberries and cream and the next minute it's raining. But as we like to say, rain doesn't stop play when you're a leather crafter. <laughs> Tennis reference. Um, so I've had a bit of fun. I saw these um, on a card making tutorial for um, a project and I just thought I wondered if I could tweak it to make it work on leather. So I've done that and made a template. You can get the template off the link in this video um, so or it's on the website as well. Um, so I'm making these little strawberry pouches. Uh, they're actually a little bit brighter red than's coming up on the camera there. They're a little bit more orangey red um, it, using the new hybrid paints came out absolutely fantastically. Um, so they have a little lid that pops off like that and you can pop the little pouch open and use it to keep little treasures in. So secret strawberries. <laughs> um, but I did actually think they'd make really nice wedding favours or something like that if you're doing a little party and you wanted little treats to go inside or just if you made them with a little bit more say of a chain or something you could actually have them as a bag um little bag buddy or something like that so you can scale them up and down as well I'll, i've included the template size but it would be easy enough to change the size um, so there they are so i'm going to show you how to make them and if you want to make along with me download the file um, cut out your templates out of the paper you'll see it here there's two parts, your green, this will become your green leaves and this will be the main body of the strawberry and this makes this larger size one here. I'm using the white veg tan, eco white veg tan calf pieces for this. Um, it's the perfect thickness and it enables me to get a nice bright colour. However, because I'm using the paints, um, it doesn't matter what leather it is, as long as it's around one mil, the paints will give you really good coverage so it's a really good way to use your scraps up maybe some firm calf, or um, you could also use natural veg tan calf leather um, as well. So um, from the calf pieces bags, um, these bags are around £9.50, £10. And some of you may have them from some of the giveaways and things we've done. So it's a great way to use them up. And just a quick note, this one is vegetable tanned as well. It's just vegetable tanned using olive oil pulp rather than bark, which means it comes out kind of creamy white colour. <laughs> so let's get started. After you've cut out your templates, drawn them onto the back of the leather and cut your leather out. Uh, the leather scissors will be fine for this uh, weight of leather. Um, we've got these two pieces here. Now you don't have to do this bit but it will look nicer and be a nice detail and it's also kind of an additional leather skill to just add in. Um, so this section here, so we've got one slightly longer length here and a slightly shorter one here. And this on this shorter one, this petal here, we're going to skive off this part here. So I'm just going to shade it in so you can see it on the camera. Now, skiving is just a case of thinning. Um, and so what we'll do when that goes together like that, instead of being bulky, um, which, as I say, you can see there is not huge hugely going to matter if you didn't do this but I do think it looks nicer. Uh, so I'm going to use this um, safety beveler. Uh, this has a blade in the curve here. It's actually a straight blade when you put it in. Uh, it just creates a, a bend into the metal um, and you can use that a bit like a peeler. So I'm going to move my cloth upwards here so that I'm using it on my hard surface. Um, now it's a case of just working in little sections. I put a new blade in so this one's really sharp so I'm not going to go too heavy with it. Um, so you kind of just want to get it started. Now particularly when you start working on this grain side it can be a bit difficult to get started. So sometimes it can be a good idea to just scratch with the scratch all, create a bit of a rough surface just to get it going. Just gives you something to grip to. Now what tends to happen when you're doing this is that the edges go, as you're getting to the edge, you tend to have more pressure going and so you get the edges quite thin, but that's kind of what we want when they go together. So now if I run my finger over, I can get a sense of how, th how much thinner it is. I've taken probably about a quarter of this off at the minute, so let's just take a little bit more. I'm gonna, um, glue this together. Now we could dye this flat um, or we can do it 
done together but I found after doing both of these two that I actually preferred to, to paint it when it was put together this was just so that if I've got any edges like this I could make sure everything was kind of hidden um, so what I am going to do though is put the holes in just so that I can uh, make sure that when I cover it if I was to put cover it for color it first and then punch them you can sometimes see the white whereas if you do it this way you can um, push some of the um, color into the holes now to make these holes I'm going to put a firm piece of leather underneath as a cushion it will just give me a much nicer clean cleaner cut so again I'm doing this while it's flat because that's a little easier and this is just the rotary hole punch size three three from the bottom smallest okay so now we're ready to put some glue on I'm just going to use the EcoFlow leather world for this which is a really good strong sort of PVA base uh, so let's just get some of that going I'm just gonna I don't need a huge amount I'm gonna do that white top and close it and then just use my spreader um, this way I can get the spread glue right to the edges without creating it too much mess now when you fold this round you'll see from the pattern that Uh, this side is shorter now the reason this is longer is we're working not as in, not the, quite the same way as paper we want to allow for the thickness of the leather so we're going to bend that round and pull it up so that the point is meeting get it lined up and press it all together now you'll see on the back this one is slightly smaller um, that's deliberate so that it won't show um, and it should just tuck into place so give it a good press down this glue has really good contact it kind of takes almost and grips almost immediately so I'm just going to really press that down in place lovely and we're ready now to do some coloring so for the coloring I've got a clean piece of paper underneath and I've got my tiles so I like working on these tiles and I'm going to use the candy apple candy red now again we really don't need very much with these these are the new paints and a little goes a long way and you can always put a bit more on if you need to might need a little more than that but not a lot there we go so it's apple candy red the Ophelia Green, I think that makes a really good colour for the top. And then we've got some black, which we can do the dots with. So I'm going to use <coughs> my some cut pieces of my cut and use foam pad, which um, if for those of you who haven't seen it, have a watch of the other demonstration. Um, this is really good. It's got this solid foam top and then which stops any penetration going any further than that for the paints um, so I'm just going to load some up onto the pad and then we can just start working and because of the way this um, pad works you can get really nice even coverage Okay, so we have them painted. Now I'm going to show you what happened with this one um, because it's I could <laughs> I could easily not show mistakes, but I think it's always useful to learn from them. You'll see a lighter patch in the centre here. Uh, this is because I applied some hand cream before I started this tutorial. Um, fatal mistake. Make sure your hands are washed and clean. You can't tell. It was a very fine cream, and it, where I was holding the leather here it's impeded the um, adhesion of the um, paint to go in um, it's not the end of the world all I need to do is just get a 
a um, bit of a damp cloth, rub that back and then I can give it a second coat and get rid of that mark. Um, but just lesson learned there, think about your hand cream before you start doing any of your colouring onto leather. Um, this piece here I did was on the natural veg tan piece and while I've just still got a little bit of the colour left, if I've got enough here, probably not quite, let's put a little bit more on. I'm going to show you it on a really dark scrap of leather as well. So one of the things with this paint is it's true colour. Uh, so unlike the dyes and colours, what you see is what you get. Um, and it's opaque. So the thicker you put it on, the more true the colour will be. I put that to there. And give it some good coverage to hide the dark uh, ox blood underneath. And I'm going to put a bit of the red on as well for the camera so you can see how that looks. So you can see that you could use any of the scraps with these paints and get them to the colours that you want. So whether your scraps are light or dark, um, obviously the white is going to give you a nice bright results, but you should get the same kind of bright results. Maybe you might need a second coat just to even out any marks where it's not um, gone on evenly, but you can see there that's really nice and bright. So now we're going to wipe our hands off <laughs> and it's all about how we put, put it together. So I have a length of uh, waxed thread here. This is just the natural. Um, you can obviously use any colour that you have to hand. Um, it's just going to make your thread. So just starting from any one point, you want to come round and go from the outside. So we're going like so. always going from the outside hole in until you get to the same hole that you went and then you want to go through so you might want to pull your threads to get a little bit more out you want to carry on and go through three more holes so you're kind of going to go around the strawberry about one and a half times and that should leave your threads almost opposite each other so that when you pop them back and pull it in, it pulls the whole thing neatly back up together. Let's give it a little bit of manipulation there and you get your strawberry shape. I'm just going to create a little bit of a bend on that one. So that gives us our strawberry shape. And then to pop our top on top, this one I, I've experimented with two or three holes, but we're going to do this. We'll try this one. Um, so I'm going up. And then I'm going down through the centre one with this three hole one. And back. The important thing is at least one of them is doubled round. And this way. When you go to slide the lid off or up or down, it's got some tension to it. So there we go. Let's just catch that from over the points. So now we can just pull that down into place. That slides it and holds it and keeps it in, in the centre, keeps it on the top there, keeps it nice and tight. But if you want to release it off, you can just unpull here and open up to find your secret treasures inside. So the last thing is just to add your little black dots. So just do those with a paintbrush and have some fun putting them on. So I just have a kind of trusty little old paintbrush that has lots of gunk still on it so it's actually kind of quite hard rather than brush like and that makes it easy to put the dots in place so I'm just picking up a little bit just making sure I've got a good coverage and you want them just kind of random 